Welcome back again to our Basic Chemical Pathology Practice Question Series, Part 3. I'm glad to see you again. My name still remains Dr. Ia Izebasi, and I'll take you through this part. In this part, I think we'll be dealing with dehydration, water intoxication, as well as some part of um, electrolyte balance. So please sit tight, subscribe, like, comment, and share so that you support our channel and keep it running. This is a free resource. Let other people know about it. Thank you so much. So question one, which of the following is a common cause of dehydration? Excessive water intake, high humidity, prolonged physical activity, sedentary lifestyle, prolonged physical activity like exercise, trainers, exercises can do that to us. So question number two, what is the primary symptom of dehydration? You have excessive thirst, increased urine output, bradycardia, and hyperventilation. We we'll go with excessive thirst. That's the first thing you begin to have when you start being dehydrated. Okay, question number three, dehydration can lead to a decrease in blood pressure, blood sugar levels, blood viscosity, and blood pH. Actually, it would lead to a decrease in blood pressure. Okay, viscosity actually increases. Uh, blood pH, depending on what cause the dehydration may increase or decrease. So our answer would be blood pressure. Question number four, which of the following groups is particularly susceptible to dehydration. You have infants and young children, teenagers, middle adults, and elderly. Just the most prone group be the infants and young children due to their inability you know, to get to water when they can need to depend on caretakers. Question number five, dehydration can lead to impaired cognitive function, muscle strength, bone density, and liver function cognitive function because it has to do with dizziness, ataxia, and all that that is associated with hydration. Question number six, what is the primary treatment for dehydration? You should actually replace a fluid. The given fluid for replacement usually would be the ORS, the oral rehydration therapy. All right, while well, taking care of whatever it is that is causing the dehydration. So question number seven, which of the following is a symptom of moderate dehydration? Sunken eyes will be that. Okay, question number eight. Dehydration can lead to an imbalance in electrolytes, vitamins, fats, and proteins. I will go with electrolytes. Question number nine. What is the recommended daily fluid intake for adults to prevent dehydration? It can range from 2 to 2.5 liters, depending on your lifestyle, water intake, the temperature around you and all that, okay, or if you're male or female. So I will go with 2 to 2.5 liters. Question 10, which of the following can be a sign of severe dehydration in infants? The only place you can see a sunken fraternal is in an infant. All right. So question number 11, water intoxication, also known as water poisoning, hyperhydration occurs due to excessive water intake, inadequate water intake, high sodium intake, low potassium intake. What do you think? I will go with A. Question number 12, which of the following is a potential cause of water intoxication? You have potomania, dehydration, high humidity, low atmospheric pressure. I will go with potomania. Potomania is a situation where somebody gulps a lot of alcohol, presumably beer. Some people can sit there and take one crate of beer, two crates of beer at a go, at a seating that is referred to as potomania. So I guess there is craziness that is attached to drinking. All right, question number 13. Which of the following organs is primarily affected by water intoxication. The organ that will be actually really affected by it is the brain. It's very sensitive to water levels. So question number 14, in cases of water intoxication, the concentration of sodium in the blood increases, decreases, remains unchanged and fluctuates randomly. What do you think? It will actually decrease. This type of decrease is called dilutional hyponatremia, all right? 
So question number 15, water intoxication can lead to the swelling of the brain. I told you that the brain is actually very much uh, affected in water intoxication. So this is a condition known as cerebral edema. Question number 16, what is the term for the excessive production of dilute urine often seen in cases of water intoxication? Diuresis, no, that's normal. Oligoyuria, that's production of uh, a little urine. Polyuria, that's production of much urine. Anuria, production of no urine. Polyuria. Question number 17. What is the primary treatment for water intoxication? You actually have to restrict fluid. You don't give anything strict fluid and you try to get rid of the water that is already there. So what you do is fluid restriction. Question number 18. Water intoxication can lead to an imbalance in which of the following electrolytes? Like I told you that the most prominent effect is dilutional hyponatremia, which is associated with sodium levels. All right, question number 19, what is the term for the involuntary intake of water to the point of discomfort? Polydipsia, polyphagia, polyuria, polyhydraminose. We will go with polydipsia, which is um, takes so much water sometimes, it's linked to psychiatric conditions all right so question number 20 water intoxication is most likely to occur when fluid intake is spread out evenly throughout the day i don't think so large amounts of water are consumed rapidly mm -hmm. fluid intake is restricted i don't think so electrolyte intake is high so with large amounts of water consumed rapidly 21, water intoxication can lead to an imbalance in A, electrolytes, B, vitamins, C, proteins, D, fats. Both water intoxication and water dehydration would lead to an imbalance in electrolyte, depending on what's causing it, right? So question 22, which of the following mechanisms plays a role in regulating water balance by controlling thirst perception? That would be your osmoreceptor stimulation. Question number 23, which electrolyte is the most abundant intracellular cation? Note, intra, so we go with potassium. Question number 24, what condition arises from high levels of potassium in blood? You have hyperpotassemia, <laughs> that's serious. Hypercalcemia, hyper hypokalemia, and hyperkalemia. So we go with hyperkalemia because that's the name for high levels of uh, potassium above the upper limit of the normal uh, blood. All right, question number 25, which electrolyte imbalance can result from excessive salt intake or dehydration that would be hypernatremia? Question number 26, the primary role of calcium in the body is for nerve impulse transmission muscle contraction, blood clotting, and all of the other. If you look at all, calcium does all of that. So the answer will be all of that. Both. Question 27, which electrolyte imbalance is associated with muscle cramps and tetany? I will go with hypocalcemia. Question number 28, which electrolyte imbalance is characterized by a decrease in serum chloride levels? We have hyponatremia, that's low sodium, hypernatremia, high sodium, hypochloremia, low chloride, hyperchloremia, high levels of chloride, hypochloremia. Question 29, which electrolyte is essential for maintaining proper acid-base balance in the body? You have sodium, potassium, calcium, and bicarbonate. It's my lovely friend, bicarbonate. 30. Before we conclude, I want you to check these things. Have you subscribed? Okay. Have you commented? Have you shared? Have you given a thumbs up? Please do that or unread everything that you have read or unsee everything you have seen or unwatch everything you have watched. 
All right, please help to support our channel. So question number 30, what electrolyte imbalance can result from severe diarrhea? We have hypokalemia, which is low potassium levels, hyperkalemia, high potassium levels, hypocalcemia, and hypercalcemia. So what do you think is the answer? Should I allow you to answer this one by yourself? All right, if you said hypokalemia, you are right because in diarrhea, we lose a lot of um, potassium rich fluid from um, intestines, okay? We also lose a lot of um, sodium. We also lose a lot of bicarbonate, all right? But that which is highly affected would be potassium. And that is the only type of acidosis where you have low potassium levels. Thank you so much for listening. Bye-bye. Take care. Love you. Hope to see you once more again. Don't Please don't stop supporting our channel. <laughs> All right. Thank you and God bless you.